Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. So often, when we refer to security, we think about usernames and passwords, we think about file protection and files, and we think about access to servers. We also think about backing up those servers to protect our data, and that's all part of security. But the one thing that we don't often concern ourselves with, and it is very critical, is the actual network. So today, we really want to talk about how to back up Ubiquity Unify. So backups on Ubiquity Unify are stored at the cloud key or the Unify OS level, and there are separate backups for each application. I'm going to focus on UDM Pro backups, but most of this applies to folks with cloud keys as well. The Unify OS backup is the way that the UDM, UDM Pro, or cloud keys backup the user accounts, user roles, account groups, and global settings. Application backups are for the network controller, which used to be called the SDN for Software Defined Network, Unify Protect, Unify Access, and also Unify Talk in any future applications. So Unify OS Backup is a backup of your user accounts and global settings by selecting the menu, the gear, and then the advanced function. So in this particular case, you can see number one, we hit the menu button. Number two, we select the gear. Number three, we go to advanced and it brings us up to a menu that looks like this. Then we scroll down to the backup configuration section. There's a backup configuration section here. You can say backup console, which really means backup the Unify OS settings. You can click on the backup now to take a backup, and these backups are stored in the cloud. And you can schedule when you want a backup to automatically take place. And optionally, you can download a backup. So, Unify OS backups are stored in the cloud, as I just mentioned, but having a local backup is much safer. So, when you say download your backup, it'll come up eventually and say it's going to back up to a file called Unify underbar core underbar backup and then a timestamp and some other data. You can also back up the network controller. And the network controller is separate. So if you go into the new interface and you go down to system, you can see that auto backups are enabled and you have a schedule for backing up the network configuration. And it says uh, what the data retention is in days for those backups. And then it lists several of the backups that have taken place. So, although the Unify network controller backups can be done automatically and on a schedule, they're stored on your UDM, on your UDM Pro, or your cloud key. So the network backups are not actually stored in the cloud. In the case of a UDM or UDM Pro, if you need to do a factory reset, all of those backups that we just saw would be lost. So the backup section of the new interface does not allow you to download the network controller backup. The legacy interface is needed to store a local copy of your Ubiquity Unify network controller backup. So <clears throat> the network controller legacy backup screen looks like this, and you can see you have both the ability to download a backup uh, and you can specify how many days of data you want it to include. And you can also restore a backup, or you can download any of the backups which have been stored off on the UDM Pro or the UDM. So, the Unify Network Controller Backup stores your adopted devices and their settings. 
This includes VLANs, switch port names, switch port profiles, and client names and addresses. This also includes your port forward settings, your firewall rules, your groups, your wireless SSIDs, radius user accounts, and defined networks. This also includes all the threat management settings and your guest portal settings. So you can see there's quite a bit stored here. So what's the impact of loss? Well, few people realize that one of the key impacts of loss besides all the settings are also what we call the insights information. These contain a database of all the client systems that you've set an alias for. This database also tracks DHCP address reservations, which are a way of managing static addresses in the network controller as opposed to individually in each OS instance setting static addresses. And if you've watched my channel before, you know that I always specify the fact that using a DHCP address reservation on your router is really the preferred best practice as opposed to setting static addresses on each individual server. That being said, your network configuration now becomes more critical that you back it up and back it up frequently anytime you make a change to a server instance or you won't know what address that it was running on. So DHCP address reservations. If you go into your clients section, list your clients, it's this little blue icon over here, and then you pick a particular client. In this case, I picked a Raspberry Pi I have on the network. If you go down to you, if you go to the gear, select the gear, um, and you go down to network, the network section has a place where it says use fixed address. That's the DHCP address reservation I was just talking about. And so this address for this node will be the same address that instance or that machine gets every time the network boots up or every time that machine boots up. And the way that it does that is it tracks it by MAC address. Okay, also device fingerprints give your clients an icon in the network client listing. And this is kind of a neat capability that um, the Unify uh, network program, network controller program has. If you go down and you look at a particular node, there's an area called uh, device fingerprint that you can go change. And if you have the wrong icon, in this particular case, I have my instance of guacamole, which is one of the clients I brought up. And Apache guacamole is a Linux instance, but it says that the device fingerprint is one for Windows, and that's not correct. So you can click on an option over here that says report wrong icon. I don't know if that's really accurate. I don't know if those reports actually go back to Ubiquity or not, but when you click on it, it pops up this screen, and this screen allows you to search for and replace the icon with something more appropriate. In this particular case, I didn't show it, but in this search blank, I typed in Linux, and I chose a Linux icon for my guacamole node, which is more applicable. And these icons show up in the client listing on the left-hand side when you look down. Or if instead of displaying your clients tabularly, if you display your clients as um, icons or tiles, then you get a uh, big display of all of these icons. So these uh, fingerprint icons I find to be very valuable. And that's also something that's stored as part of the network. So it's another reason you want to back things up. Okay, so what are best practices? Well, make a backup of Unify OS settings and download it anytime you add a new user or change a setting on the console. So the console would be like the cloud key or the Unify OS part of the UDM Pro or the UDM. And it's gonna store it to a file called Unify underbar core, underbar backup, and then um, uh, some number uh, dot Unify. 
You want to make a backup of your Unify network controller, which is the SDN. Anytime you add a new network device or you make a change to something as basic as even one client or a fingerprint like we just talked about, and you want to download it, it'll give the version of the SDN you were using uh, along with the minor version number. It'll give a, a date, timestamp, and then the extension is .unf. And then Unify Network Controller Backup should include the last seven days in order to capture this client data. So if you said settings only, it's not going to capture the data, I don't believe, for your um, address reservations. So I capture the last seven days. So backups for other apps like Unify Protect are handled within the application and they should also be downloaded as well. So inside the Unify Protect program, you have an option to backup things and it calls that file Unify under bar protect under bar backup dot v1. And in this case, it gives a timestamp and it's actually a zip file. So several versions of these backups should be retained and copied to another location on your network that can be accessed in the event of an outage. Because in the event of an outage, you're going to want to be able to restore these things. So yes, by all means, download them and store them on your regular um, daily driver PC. But also you might want to store those things off to another server or NAS someplace as an important backup. So again, I say store many backup versions. In this particular case, um, here's a screenshot of a file structure that I have. And you can see that I have lots and lots of backups of the SDN. I have a few backups of the Unify OS because I don't make very many changes in it. And I only have one backup of my Unify Protect because I um, haven't made a lot of changes in it either. So these are really good things to have. And in the event one of them is corrupted, you can always go back to another one. So I keep quite a few of these here, and you can see different uh, versions of the controller and that sort of thing. So, hey, they're not that big. It's not a big deal to keep a bunch of them around. So in summary, a catastrophic failure of a UDM Pro, UDM, or Cloud Key can result in a loss of authorized users, groups, and global settings on your network. A catastrophic failure of the network controller, otherwise known as the SDN, can result in a loss of settings for switches, access points, routing rules, client addresses, and many other key network configuration details. So it turns out it's very important to back up your network configuration, especially if you're self-hosting like we talk about on this channel all the time. There's a lot of self-hosted instances, Docker instances, um, LexD instances, virtual machines, bare metal servers. All these things are on your network and their configuration on your network is critically important. So other Unify apps like Unify Protect, Unify Access, and Unify Talk, uh, they also have configurations. And within those programs, they also have a backup option and you should make a good backup of them as well. So these backups need to be stored locally. And they also, as we talked about here, um, need to be backed up somewhere else on your network as well. Um, hey, you can't have enough protection. So a loss of your network configuration can result in a work stoppage or just many, many hours of frustration. So I encourage you all to take what you've learned here, go out, do your backups. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and please subscribe and like to the channel and we'll see you next time.